वेलकम टू रा ऑनलाइन टूडेज टॉपिक इज कैंसर ऑफ वेजाइना सो द वेजाइनल कैंसर इज अ रेयर ट्यूमर इन फैक्ट इट इज वेरी रेयर कंपेयर टू ऑल अदर कॉमन ट्यूमर्स लाइक सी एस अविक सी एंडोमेट्रियम सी ओवरी एंड सी ए वलवा सो इट इज ओनली वन टू टू परसेंट ऑफ गायनोकोलॉजिकल मेलेग्नेंसीज एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द ट्यूमर्स इन साइड वेजाइना आर मेटास्टैटिक दे डू नॉट हैव प्राइमरी इज लेस कॉमन वेजाइनल मेटास्टैटिक कैंसर्स आर एटी टू नाइन्टी परसेंट and the mean age of patients with ca vagina is 60 to 70 so it is a disease of the seventh decade of life most of the vaginal cancers on histopathological examination are squamous in variety because the mucous membrane is moist squamous and hpv human papilloma virus dna has been identified as a causative agent in vaginal uh, intraepithelial neoplasia which is a pre malignant lesion for the vaginal cancer so what are the precursors for vaginal carcinomas precursors for primary vaginal carcinomas include uh, vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia and vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia can be subclassified as vain1 2 and 3 the average age of presentation of vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia is in the 6th decade and it is much rare compared to cervical intraepithelial neoplasias and it is diagnosed in the same setting as cin along with colposcopy if you see any suspicious areas in the vagina 5% of these vaginal intraepithelial neoplasias can progress to vaginal cancer if we were to take a biopsy of a vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia we will see the features of cellular atypia like pleomorphism irregular nuclear contours and chromatin crumping we'll see abnormal maturation of cells and a big nucleus and an increased nucleocytoplasmic ratio now coming to uh, vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia 3 which is a pre malignant lesion and it usually occurs in the upper third of vagina usually it is multifocal and a diffuse lesion and one third of patients Uh, also have a concurrent cervical intraepithelial neoplasia and cervical intraepithelial neoplasia and vaginal intraepithelial neoplasias are fine co- coexisting in around 10 to 20% of patients and the colposcopic findings are similar to that of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia like suspicious cysto white um, staining uh, epithelium with punctations and mosaic patterns as seen on the cervix are similarly seen on the vagina now uh, vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia can be subclassified as vain1 2 and 3 in vain1 which is a milder form of the intraepithelial neoplasia we see that there is a proliferation of the cells in the basal layer with coelocytotic uh, atypia like hpv with an enlarged polymorphic nucleus and a va- vacuolated cytoplasm so these changes are limited to the lower one third of the vaginal epithelium in vain2 the basement membrane is proliferated and the coelocytotic atypia is in the lower two third of the vaginal intraepithelial membrane and these uh, atypical cells have got a large pleomorphic or a uh, irregularly shaped nucleus and pycnotic nucleus and a vacuolated cytoplasm suggestive of coelocytotic atypical changes now vain3 these uh, cells are present in the entire thickness of the vaginal epithelium though the basement membrane is intact and there is an abnormal proliferation of basal and para basal cells and these replace the full thickness of epithelium these cells have big nucleus so there is an high nucleus cytoplasmic ratio the nuclei are oval and the if you see carefully the nuclei are arranged longitudinally in the lower third and these oval nuclei are arranged horizontally in the upper one third now how do we treat vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia a small lesion can be biopsied we can do a partial vaginectomy with laser vaporization and intravaginal 5 fluorouracil cream has also been tried after and the patient is kept under strict follow now what are the predisposing factors for vaginal cancers it is a disease of the poor so low socio economic status sexually transmitted diseases history of genital warts then vaginal discharge or irritation history previously abnormal pap smears if the patient has undergone an early hysterectomy previous 
pelvic irradiation which is a controversy which can be a cause or may not be a cause and another predisposing factor for vaginal cancer is in utero exposure uh, in to a female fetus if the woman takes diethyl stelbestrol during her pregnancy. Now, vagina is a muscular dilatable tube of around 5.7 centimeters in length and with three layers of mucosa, muscularis and adventitia which is the outermost fibrous tissue. Now, the vaginal mucosa does not have any glands and it does not change much during the reproductive cycle. The upper vagina has a lymphatic drainage into the pelvic lymph node and the lower vagina drains into the femoral and the inguinal lymph nodes. So if there is a CA vagina in the upper vagina, uh, which is more likely, so most of the lesions in, of CA vagina are in the upper vagina and most of them are in the posterior wall of vagina and they spread by continuity and contiguity to cervix or vulva. Now having said that, if the vaginal tumor is spread to cervix, it is staged as CA cervix and if a vaginal tumor is spread to vulva, it is staged as CA vulva. So if the vaginal primary tumor spreads to cervix, it changes the diagnosis as CA cervix and if the vaginal primary tumor spreads to vulva, it changes the diagnosis as CA vulva. So this is the algorithm we all follow and direct extension to bladder, parametrium, paracolpos, rectum, cardinal ligament and uterosacral ligaments has also been recorded. So when you look at the CA vagina, most of them it's an ulcer. So half of the time it will be an ulcer inside the vagina, 30% will be an exophytic cauliflower growth and 20% of them will be a circumferential constricting annular ring-like lesion involving the peripheral ring of vagina. How does it spread? Now any nodal group may be involved regardless of the tumor. So upper vagina should go into the pelvis and lower vagina should go into the inguinal lymph nodes. But it doesn't happen like that and any group of nodal may be involved regardless of the tumor location. And if the tumor is in lower third of vagina, it's more likely to involve the inguinal lymph nodes. If the tumor is in upper third of vagina, it's more likely to involve the pelvic lymph nodes. And clinically apparent inguinal lymph node metastasis will be present in 5 to 20 percent of patients of CA vulva. And if inguinal lymph nodes can be clinically palpated, but pelvic lymph nodes we have to check with CT and MRI. And this will also help us to stage the tumor and locate the tumor. Now this is a slide showing the lymphatic drainage of vagina. So in the lower part near the vulva, the lower third of vagina has a different embryological origin and it drains into the inguinofemoral lymph node. The middle part of vagina drains into the external ileic lymph node and also into the internal ileic and the hypogastric group of lymph node. The upper part of vagina goes directly into the common ileic and through the inner and rectum into the 